Hi, I would like to explain to you about how to use charts and tables with Keynote which will help you to uh, do a presentation better. If you're using Mac, we all love Keynote. So once you're in Keynote, start a new page and of course uh, when you want to add a chart, so what you can do is that's very clearly sitting, you go into a 2D chart and place it uh, well to be the center and add a title first. So here I would like to have percentage of excess weight loss post bariatric surgery. So once you do your uh, titling, you can uh, go ahead and you can uh, start uh, doing something for your legend. So in legend, uh, you can really uh, work on uh, what are the comparisons what you're going to do with. So when you work with, uh, uh, once you put a legend in, then go in and feed in the data. So I would like to uh, measure what is the outcome of surgery at one month, three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. So try to feed in the y-axis with that. And uh, so once you do with whatever you want to do, you can you know increase it any number of numbers uh, of months you want that. Then in the region one and two, I would like to compare x y x axis uh, sleeve gastrectomy with uh, uh, say R Y G B. So then you try to feed in what is the percentage excess weight loss. So maybe let's randomly choose 20% uh, in the first month with LSG and 22 with R Y G B. The same way, try to add uh, the data for all the parameters what you want to measure. So once you do that, the biggest advantage what you're going to have is the, the data looks very clean in one slide itself, which can explain literally uh, the, the whole one year's excess weight loss scenario. But the, uh, uh, the honest is try to label it properly. You know, don't overdo things at the same time don't underdo things so that sometimes you get stressed out and you're not able to see and so you won't be able to explain to the uh, delegates so once that is done we can go in and and and, and, and try to uh, you know change the type of a chart you wanted you know you can be a stack column you can, you can have a bar uh, you know but for all practical purposes 2d columns is so common so i try to choose 2d column here so i am done with the 2d column here so once done with it then what we can do is you can go ahead and do the uh, gap between the column so it can be wide gap so that it looks confusing so the more closer the comparison is good so here i like to uh, touch you know, uh, have both together as well as between the sets you can have a good length so i like to have some kind of a good distance between the sets so that it is very clear to the audience once the chart is done then go to the axis in the axis try to name the axis as much as possible so that it's easy for people who are looking at it so the x-axis it's the excess weight loss and since we are talking about percentage i would like to have it as a hundred percent so uh, what i would like to do is in the scale make the maximum as hundred percent so once you make a maximum hundred percent then it equally divides itself into hundred percent which whatever uh, you know uh, steps you wanted if you want four steps it will be in case of 25 so once that is done, you can always go with whichever value you wanted. I choose number, it can be percentage, it can be anything. So then, you know, you can choose whether you want to choose minimal value or not. But other than that, grid lines are all not that much. So you go to the y-axis and do the same. So you uh, name the y-axis. So once you name the y-axis, then you know you know exactly what you're talking about. So let us type in what uh, a post-operative follow-up. So post-operative follow-up up to one year. Uh, comparing sleeve and bypass with personal excess weight loss that's exactly what it is and it's been very clear with this chart so this explains it much more easier than putting a lot of text is difficult to read as well so when you want to add numbers uh, uh, the, the series names you can add but here we don't want it because we know we're comparing much much lesser and of course, of course uh, the labels can be minimal labels or it can be all every, every set can be with a label depending upon how you want to present it and of course depending upon the space you can always have the angles also it can be vertical or it can be horizontal it can be whichever way you want it if it's a long num name you can make it uh, horizontal as well vertical as well so then go to the series and of course you number them to so have a clear idea about the percentage so there can be so many value labels number currency percentage fraction whatever you want to so if you add percentage it will be in percentage but again you don't you want a number here so i go with the numbers 
So once you do that, you know, it, 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 you should go and arrange uh, things if, whichever way you wanted to. So if you constrain the properties, what happens when you reduce it, every aspect ratio is maintained. But if you don't constrain it, the aspect ratio will be uh, bad. So but you can stretch it whichever way you wanted to so that you can suit the whole slide. So once that is done, you know, you have the whole uh, slide done. So we play, it will be a beautiful picture of uh, the graph what you wanted. So this is one way of uh, presenting a graph. So if you want a other way of plotting it so that you plot exactly the results. A scatter plot will be useful to see the trend of anything, especially in bariatric procedures where you want to compare results or you want to see a trend over a period of short term results or long term results. It is the best to do. So here you go to the chart and try to fix up the way, same way what we did with other charts. So start with the title, maybe fix up the title. So maybe we, here we want to compare the excess weight loss after bariatric surgery, maybe between a sleeve and a, say MGV. So we will do that. So what we do is we go to the chart. Once the title is done, then you can fix up the legends. And again, legends will help you very clearly to understand what exactly is going on in, uh, uh, in, the, in, in the procedure. So looking at it from here, we can plot all uh, the X and the Y graphs very eloquently. And especially when you think about uh, comparing two procedures, where in X axis you go about how to compare in, uh, in the month wise. So normally we do one month, three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months as normal. So you plot that on the X graph. And on the Y uh, section, you have uh, you know uh, to compare between LSG and our uh, MGB, which we as I told you. So once you do that, you can plot uh, all the uh, the months and 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 uh, you know, the the results compared to the months. Uh, you know, you let us say that you know you put randomly a 20, 38, and 53, 67, and 76 for LSG. And 24, 41, 56, 68, and 81 for MGB. And remove the rest of uh, the parameters which is not necessary for us. So once you do that, we will have the, the, the graph done. And again, as I told you, this will give a very, very clear picture about how to uh, you know, analyze these graphs. So once that is done, you go down and try to uh, go into the uh, you know coloring if you want to what whatever color you wanted maybe I will try to choose the same blue and green and then go and uh, do your uh, value axis of both X and Y side so let me put months in the Y axis in the X axis and then put in the Y axis uh, maybe excess weight loss that's what we are looking into so the percentage excess weight loss is plotted in the uh, the Y axis so once those two are done you can have a beautiful picture of uh, uh, you know the, the trend uh, maybe again like in the previous one I can go ahead and do it uh, with a hundred percent for the excess weight loss thing and this data symbol instead of a round if it's an X it will be much more easier and then I can go and connect them in the lines before that I will try to take the top one above so once you get the uh, one procedure uh, or thing above and the other procedure below so we can have a comparison of both the procedures with their excess percentage so do that once we do that then you can go and color it so we can go uh, you know uh, mark uh, all the parameters uh, for uh, maybe a LSG and then you know mark with blue and then go for uh, you know MGB and mark with green so uh, whatever you want to do, uh, you know, you can change the colors and once you play them, you know, it looks so beautiful. So this gives a very good, uh, you know, uh, graph. The next type is uh, to have a table done. So tables also have a place, especially when you want to do calculations. Type in surgery as the first column. Then I will try to put in LSG and um, RYGB and MGB so comparing results of all the three procedures so what I would like to put is maybe we'd like to uh, do the outcome of uh, surgery 
per se with complications and a loss and everything so um, so you type in the operating time maybe uh, so operating time then I can go into complications uh, type in complications then maybe I can do av average length of stay a loss so try to compare all three so here how to do it for example you hit operating time of LSG you know it comes to around maybe a 43.4 minutes and RVGB maybe less than a couple of hours maybe I'll, 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 I'll try to make it uh, something close to maybe 94.2 uh, okay that's okay and then um, MGB MGB as we know that it's less time consuming than RVGB so I'll put it at 78.8 and complications maybe 2 in LSG I'll put 3 in RVGB and then again I put 2 in MGB um, so average length of stay of course we know that uh, sleeve has the list, least so I'll put it 2.04 and RVGB maybe I can put 3.86 and MGB at uh, 2.04 again so now what we can do is instead of trying to calculate to uh, other sources uh, Keynote has its own special uh, uh, way of saying so go there and type equal to in the column where you want the cells then a pop-up screen comes in in that you can add all three together so by default if you click all three it will be added so operating time totally it will be 216.4 minutes but of course we don't want uh, the total we want a mean of all three so what we can do is we can go ahead and type uh, uh, equal to again then go to the right you see there are plenty of parameters which you can choose in that you can choose from date and time to duration so let's go to the statistics so when I click statistics you have a lot of things so maybe I'll click average uh, maybe that's what we wanted but we have plenty of plenty of uh, you know parameters which you can understand and automatically calculate okay let me click cal average you see what average is uh, down 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 the line you know you see the uh, answers to it so you can read through what it says so it has a very good description in it okay once you went through it only when that's the one you wanted you insert the function once you insert the function then go and click all the functions which you wanted also then click tick it shows the mean of all three so in that maybe what you do is you go and you uh, instead of uh, uh, in cell instead of creating a decimal into auto make decimal into uh, 0.1 so it will give 72.1 as a result so that is the mean of the time when it comes to complications maybe you want the total number of complications so you, you click equal to and add all three together the number of complications comes through so it's seven so you don't know to really calculate and a loss again go on the point and click then again I want an average a loss so insert and add all three then you know it gives an average of the same you can go into the cell and go into the decimals uh, and instead of auto try to uh, make it into you know uh, one or two okay 2.65 is the a loss so this gives a good results which we don't want to work on so these are the three ways on which you will have the parameters done for charting next issue maybe we will talk about how to use charts and tablets in a powerpoint presentation watch out for this space